About a thousand years ago, Venice's leader sailed out to the Adriatic and, on behalf of his people, flung a golden ring overboard and declared Venice and the sea married. But relationships change, and while yesteryear Venice married the water to flex on her, today year Venice is building multi-billion euro walls to keep her at bay, and they're only kind of doing the job. If your marriage is in a similar rough patch, I can't help you. My last six marriages ended this exact way. But if you want to know about that wall, how it works, how many people embezzled money from it, what this fake island's for, and why all that still might not be enough to save Venice from its wife, I gotcha. Venice, as you may know, is made up of 118 islands and sits at its highest point about a meter above sea level. Its lowest point, Piazza San Marco, is only 64 centimeters, just over two feet above sea level, meaning it starts ticking on water when the tide comes in 75 centimeters, about two and a half feet above sea level. And when the tide is 95 centimeters, or three-ish feet, it floods. That adds up to about 100 days of flooding a year. And while aqua alta, or occasional tidal flooding, has been a part of Venetian life for centuries, the situation is worsening. Sea levels play a part. They've risen about a foot since 1900. From that year to 1920, high tide topped 110 centimeters, three and a half-ish feet, six times. From 2003 to April 2023, it happened 20 times, then 130 more times. And while sea levels rise, Venice levels fall. Venice has sunk about 32 centimeters, or $3 bills, in the last 150 years, 12 centimeters of which they lost because in the 50s and 60s, they pumped a bunch of groundwater out of the aquifers under the city. So now they have higher tides, a lower city, and a lot more flooding. And in 1984, they decided to do something about it. That something was a massive infrastructure project known as MOES, which technically stands for all this, but is also named after Moses, history's greatest hydrologist. They meant to finish it in 1995, so it naturally wrapped up in 2023. One of the reasons it got so delayed was because in 2014, it came out that several people involved in Moe's had a little embezzlement problem. Basically, contractors wanted the government to keep paying them to build Moe's, so they overcharged the government for Moe's, then used the extra money to bribe politicians to give them more contracts to build Moe's. And while bribing the government with their own money is iconic, it didn't totally work out because the story broke, 35 people got arrested, and Moe's struggled to get any real funding for five years. Moe's was supposed to cost about 4.7 billion euros, but once you factor in all the bribes, delays, and other unexpected costs, the final bill is looking more like 8 billion, which is a huge amount of money, but in fairness, Moe's is a huge project. It consists of 78 hinged seawalls, each 20 meters, or two tennis courts wide, and varying from 18.6 to 29.6 meters, or about two to three tennis courts tall, and 3.6 to five meters, or five to seven ping pong tables, thick, depending on which of three inlets they're in. Each each wall has a hinge connecting it to a 14,000 ton concrete bed sunk into the seafloor. When not in use, the wall is full of water, which weighs it down into the bed. When it's time to go up, it fills with compressed air, which forces the water out and floats the wall up. Walls are spaced about three inches apart to alleviate some of the water pressure on them, and they go up four or five at a time over the course of about 32 minutes. When it's time to come down, they refill with water and sink back to the floor, which takes about 16 minutes. Every month, the walls get treated with an anti-corrosive designed to not poison the lagoon, and twice a season, they dredge the sand out of the bed so that the walls can go all the way down. This inlet has 19 walls, this one has 18, and this one has 41 split into two channels, 21 in the north and 20 in the south. In between, there's an artificial island, which is currently nameless, so I asked my writers to brainstorm a few. Feel free to put your ideas in the comments, or a letter to the mayor of Venice. They'll love that. The whole system's command center, where they monitor the tides and activate the barriers, is here, connected to every single wall via an underground tunnel system. On a chill day, there are about six people around keeping an eye on stuff. But when Moe's goes up, there are a hundred on the islands, in the tunnels, and in boats getting people to and from the city. As a general rule, Moe's goes up when the tide is expected to be one meter above sea level. The real target is 1.1 meters, but when you add wind and rain to a one meter day, it may get to 1.1 anyway. That threshold, as you may have noticed, is higher than the 95 centimeter level at which Piazza San Marco floods, and while in theory Venice could raise Moe's whenever a tourist spills a spritz on the Grand Canal, doing so is a trade-off. It costs about 328,000 euros, plus the cost of partially or entirely sealing off the ports. There are ecological consequences too, as raising the barrier stops or slows water from cycling in and out of the lagoon, preventing it from cleaning itself. The one meter threshold protects 86% of the city, which isn't terrible, 
I mean, I think a given Avenger saves about 86% of the city and leaves the other 14% with incalculable amounts of property damage, right? Actually, Moe's is a lot like an Avenger. It's a godsend, but not a practical long-term solution to a city's woes. Moe's was only meant to go up about five times a year, but it's already been up over 50 times in the first three years of operation, which is a lot of trade-off. If sea levels rise by a full meter, the lagoon would basically have to be closed off year-round, turning it into a brackish lake full of sewage. At current sea level rise rates, even in the best case scenario, Moe's would only be a working solution for about 100 years. Other, more complete solutions have been proposed, like trying to raise the city back up, or adopting a system of dams like they have in parts of the Netherlands. But whatever they decide, they need to get a move on, because while today's Moe's isn't perfect, tomorrow's Moe's is obsolete. If you ask me, and you didn't, this could all be handled in a minute if Venice and the Sea just went to marriage counseling, or if we stopped climate change. Or both! Yeah, both would be good. And you know what else would be good? Being able to eat great tasting, healthy meals without having to spend all the time for cooking or all the money for takeout. But of course, as you can probably tell, this is really just an ad read transition because you actually can with Factor. Factor is a service that I know really well because it's what I eat on almost any busy weeknight. I'm a genuine customer of theirs paying my own dollars because I found it's simply the best solution for those times when you don't have time to cook but still want to eat well. The concept's pretty simple. You pick from any of dozens of options on their app, then the next week an insulated box shows up on your doorstep with never frozen meals that you heat in just two or three minutes. That's it. They're owned by HelloFresh and have the same great quality, but focus on serving as a solution for when you have even less time. Plus, they offer tons of add-ons like smoothies, snacks, and breakfast items, so I really can skip the grocery store entirely. So if you're ready to have amazing meals at home with completely minimal effort, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code HAI50 to get 50% off your first Factor box.